<laughs> Welcome to Gutter Trash episode 351, Shade of the Changing Girl. My name is Eric. I'm Jason. Hello, Jason. <clears throat> well, howdy. <laughs> howdy. <laughs> yeah. How did do? What? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I made a big mistake today. Oh, yeah. Yeah. You did. <laughs> you got out of bed. Yep. Well, but uh, in addition to that... In addition made, to that... You made a second mistake. Yep. <clears throat> oh, I'm uh, currently trying to kick my caffeine habits, mm-hmm. and uh, it's been rough, uh, And uh, but, but I... I Really thought that I'd been sticking to it, but uh, I think I accidentally drank some caffeine today. <laughs> but you're not positive. I'm not positive, but no. you, you feel good. Uh, yeah, it's, and so clearly something's wrong. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Was that like a elixir that you just found on the sidewalk? No, no. I, I ordered lunch from from a, a sandwich place and. Uh, I said I'd like a root beer, please, and because uh, because say eighty ninety percent of the time most root beers don't have caffeine. Right, uh, that sounds about right. But uh, but uh, Bark's root beer has caffeine because mm, it has bite and bite. Right? Yes. And uh, I, I believe that may have been the culprit here. Oh yeah, and uh, so I think I I think I drank caffeine today. <laughs> well, you know. <clears throat> Everyone falls off the wagon every once in a while. Yeah, it, I mean, I've only just recently started this, so it's not like I'm like ten years clean or anything like did that. Did you have, did you alert your sponsor there? <laughs> did you call? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're supposed to you're supposed to man up to those things. I'm doing it right now. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm your sponsor. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Oh boy, yeah. I have not had a headache since around lunchtime. Oh, that's awesome. I'm, you know, feeling pretty awake. I hate headaches, man. Headaches are the worst. It's hard to concentrate. Uh huh. You just want your headache to go away. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, so yeah, so I'm, I'm fairly positive that uh, you know, I, I uh, you know, took a hit. Oh yeah, <laughs> you sucked the glass dick, as they say. <laughs> <laughs> or no, you popped the fizzy top. I don't know. I don't know what you did. <clears throat> Actually, a friend of mine who works in the uh, the medical field uh, told me that uh, apparently caffeine caffeine uh, withdrawal is actually uh, considered <clears throat> in the same vein as uh, uh, you know trying to kick heroin or. Uh, you know, uh, other hard, you know, drugs. Wow. Yeah. Uh, and that, you know, it, it, uh, it takes a lot in order to, to quit. To get over the physical withdrawal symptoms. Yep. And, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I remember when I briefly decided not to drink caffeine because I was having a lot of anxiety attacks. Yeah. And my doctor said that caffeine triggers those. Yeah. So I was like, well, then I'm giving up caffeine. And I remember, I remember, like, I couldn't believe how long that headache lasted where it just never went away. Yeah. Like, it was like almost two weeks of just a headache. Oh, I, thought, yeah. I thought I was just going to go insane and murder people. Uh-huh. But then, then I was over the hump and I was fine for, you know, like two years or whatever. And I stopped really having anxiety problems. So I started drinking minimal amounts of caffeine now. Yeah. Like just, you know, teas and whatnot. Sure. But, but not tons of them and not all the time. Right. So I kind of got it, got it back to a manageable that's yeah. good. That's good. So no headaches and no anxiety. So like the, the best of both worlds. Yeah, that's. Uh, I mean, part of my problem was that lately I've been having some really, really bad anxiety mm-hmm. uh, to the point where it is like making me physically like ill and like in complete like pain. Like my entire body is sore because I feel so clenched up. Yeah, yeah that's, that's not good. That's not good. Uh, and so. You know, part of me was like, well, I drink an exceptional amount of caffeine. Mm-hmm. Like, at least one cup of coffee a day, and then God knows how many, like, Diet Pepsis or Pepsi Maxes, which is, like, the super mega caffeine right. Pepsi. 
Uh, so, so I thought maybe, yeah, I should, you know, at the very least, I, I should probably stop the caffeine to see if that helps yeah. at all. I'm yeah. sure it will. And also, there's the issue of the fact that, you know, caffeine is supposed to be kind of a kickstarter, you know, like, like it helps you get, get your jolt to start the day kind of thing. Right. And when you drink as much as I do, it does nothing. Yeah. That's <laughs> like, I am barely maintaining a life <laughs> when I drink caffeine. So... <laughs> So yeah, I bet if you get off of it completely, you can probably go back to where you just enjoy a caffeinated beverage every once in a while, right? Yeah. Without like just craving them or exactly. like having to have them. And yeah, like uh, I decided to stop on like Thursday, and I've I had like a can of Coke, uh, like like a small can, you know, like Friday or Saturday mm-hmm. or something like that. Uh, pretty much just to stop the headache, right? And I mean, yeah, it has primarily just been a headache. Yeah. Know, from from Thursday through like just around lunchtime today. Right. <laughs> when you may have accidentally had caffeine. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm with you. Right. I, I I think you can do it though. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It does suck though. But, oh. But hey, at least it's not heroin. At least you're not having to be narconed in the highway. It's true. It's true. That happened here not too long ago. Yep. I was in the traffic jam because a guy. Uh, wrecked his car because he nodded off on heroin and I was late to work uh-huh. and uh and they just narconed him and you know he's driving again he's sure he's fine yep yep to me that makes no sense that guy would never drive again legally should never, be never yep. drive again yep he could have killed a bunch of people yep. and he made a shitload of people late to yep. whatever and it's not like you're driving on the highways to get to work no yeah I was I actually was though that day because oh, wow. I I was in the I went to like Tip City or Vandalia or something early in the day. Okay. And then uh, and then like yeah I had to like you know okay but I was like right. 30, 40 minutes late to work because so I was in the traffic jam. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah. yeah my uh, uh, actually the, that the whole you know what's it called again? Narcon. Narcon. Yeah, that that whole thing came up today during uh, at work. Weirdly enough. And uh, I also remember my ex, you know, she used to work, or she does work at a, you know, as a dispatcher, mm-hmm. and, uh, you know, they had to deal with that kind of thing oh, yeah. all the time, you know. And, it's crazy. Yeah. yeah. It's very, very prominent around here. Yep. Yeah, like, I remember telling you a story about the woman who, like, overdosed, like, four times, like, within, like, just a couple of weeks. Every time they would just give her the narcon, right? You know, she Charge her for it. Yeah. Well, sure. Yeah. yeah. That's her. That's her. Uh, <clears throat> her. Her uh, detention or whatever. Her right, uh, yeah. punishment. She she has to pay for. Right. I'm sure there's something else they do, but they don't take your license away apparently no, because no, that no, wasn't no. the first time this guy had, had that done. So yeah. yeah, it's just crazy to me. Yeah. I mean, you know, on one hand, it's like okay, well, at least there is this kind of thing that. No, oh, yeah. It can help people That's in great. situations so that they that is, die. That is great. Yeah. You know? I mean, yeah, because people make mistakes. Right. But I, I, I just like, it's there not. There should be some sort of repercussion. Yeah. Right? It's not like, okay, if, if they were like, you know, you're legally not allowed to walk anymore. Right. Like, that would be fucked up. <laughs> but if they're like, you're legally not allowed to drive anymore, that, I think that's fine. Right. Like, and when you get a DUI. Yeah. Like, they take away your license. Right. You know, well, like, how is, well, I think I don't think it's not one DUI though, is it? It's like multiple. Uh, still, but I mean, because they give you that like that party plate for a while. And yeah, the, the yellow. Tag, right. Yeah. I don't know. I just think I think driving has become this thing where, for some reason, our country thinks like it's like you know, your right to bear arms and drive a car. Right. You know, no, it, yeah, driving a car isn't your right. No. You have to you have to not behave like an asshole. God. Uh, yeah. Uh, just, I don't know. Part of my anxiety that I've been having is, is of course, driving. Mm-hmm. You know, I drive two hours every day. And during the two busiest times of the day that sure. you could be driving. Around a busy city. Right, yeah. So it's like I'm just surrounded by assholes. And I can be an asshole, too, you know, certainly. I mean, I'm an asshole in everyday life. <laughs> so clearly when I get behind the wheel of a car, that's just going to be amplified. <laughs> 
Sure, why not? But, you know, at the same time, I, I do try to make efforts to be conscientious about it. And I try to only drive the speed limit, or at least a little bit over the speed limit, you know? Right. And, like, like yesterday, Sunday, it's a Sunday morning, mm-hmm. and I, I, I went to see a movie early in the morning, like 10 o'clock in the morning. Like, it was 9.45 when I was on the road. Right. And the highway is empty. Like, I, I pulled on to the off-ramp, and there was there was actually an accident on the on the ramp, actually. Like okay. The car had like pulled, like just driven right into the ditch. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. And so there was a cop there, and I was like, "Oh, hey, you know." But like, you know, I didn't see it until like I made the turn. So I was like, "Oh, what of the cop?" And you know, slowly merged and got up to speed, right, to the highway. But you know, like by the time I was on the highway, I was doing sixty-five, and. and Pushed it to 70, and I hit cruise control, and I'm driving down a mostly empty highway. And, like, some asshole behind me is just flashing their brights at me. And they're not, like, riding my tail or anything like that either. They are way the hell behind me. Right. And they are just flashing their brights at me constantly. And, like, what are you doing? What is going on? It's like... My car is fine. Like, I'm not swerving. I'm not... Smoking. Smoking. The engine yeah, right. yeah. And, like... But... It's not like I was going too slow for them to get around me. They were way the hell behind me. Right, right, right. Yeah. And so, finally... Like, I just got pissed off. And I just slammed on my brakes. And nearly came to a stop in the middle of the highway. Just to see if they would ram into me. <laughs> oh, man. That's scary. <laughs> <laughs> That's scary. And they pulled into the fast lane. And then, you know, I got back up to speed. And then eventually they pulled in front of me. And I'm still going 70. Sure. And you know, like three or four car lengths ahead of me. So I was like, well, fuck you guys. And I just started flashing my brights at them. <laughs> and then they just moved over to the slow lane. <laughs> I was like, what in the fuck is happening? That's weird. <laughs> Unless they were flashing their brights. To alert oncoming traffic about the cop being back there. was no oncoming traffic. Oh, okay. It's a highway. Okay. It's a three-lane yeah. highway. Right. So they could... Yeah. yeah. Huh. That's weird. <laughs> uh, yeah. People drive weird. Yeah. I'm... I'm not... I'm not against the idea of, uh, like, those old curmudgeon people that are like, oh, I don't drive. Like, I kind of respect that. Yeah. Like, like, if you could get around and live your life without getting behind the wheel... I love driving, too. I love it. But just other people just don't know how to do it. If tomorrow they told me that there was going to be a bus route from my apartment to my job, you'd be alright. I would totally never drive again. Right? Remember yeah. when they were talking about doing like a the three C line or whatever? It was yeah. like Cleveland to Columbus to Cincinnati. Yep. It's never happened. No, nope. I think it was kind of uh, not really not all realistic. That convenience. Yeah. yeah, realistic either. Yeah. yeah, they said it would be really expensive. Yeah, like even a couple of weeks ago, I was driving to work, and like I was in not the fast lane, but but like the lane next to it, and you know, driving, you know, I wasn't driving super fast, but I wasn't you know slowing anybody down. Yeah. Uh, but there was a car in front of me that was you know, there was a car in front of me and a car in front of them. The car in front of them was going really slow, so they pulled over to the next lane, and then I was like, oh. This car is going really slow, so I'm going to pull over to that lane. And then, for whatever reason, the person who pulled over to get out of the slow guy's lane, like, just starts hitting their brakes and brake checking me. Like, <laughs> I just wanted to pass that car. Right. Just like you did. <laughs> right. And so then... Like, I finally was able to, like, get out of that lane, and they fucking pulled over in front of me again. Like, what the hell? (laughs) And so finally, I was actually able to get right in front of them, and then I just fucking slammed on my brakes, and they swerved off the road. Off the road? Yep. Were they okay? Yeah. Okay. Not like like into a ditch. No, no, just onto the the shoulder of the highway. No. But, you know, what the hell? (laughs) That's scary. Yeah. That all sounds scary. Uh-huh. <laughs> and it was like 
six in the morning. <laughs> Maybe people drive a different kind of weird and bad in the morning. Yeah. People drive awful all the time. I'd say during the evening they're more likely to be on their phones. Yeah, than and in the morning and at, and at night they're they're more likely to be drunk. Right, and in the mornings they're just not quite awake. Right, so yeah, it's all it's probably all just like different kinds of bad. Right. <laughs> Uh, shade the changing girl. Shade the changing girl. There it was. I review. I hope it was helpful. Um, make your decision. Yep. Based on that. <laughs> so, yeah. Shade the changing girl. Yeah. D- from DC's Young Animal. Yes, it is. Is this our first Young Animal review? It is. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So they've only been around. Seven, eight months or so. Yeah, so yeah. All their series are just wrapping up first story arcs, pretty much. Yeah. Uh, or just starting brand new series. Yeah. Like the Mike All Red Bug series. Yeah. Which I love that it's happening and am infuriated. Oh, infuriated? Fucking do Madman. He's already done like 80 issues of Madman. I just want Madman. I don't want him to do Silver Server. I don't want him to do Bug. I don't want him to do Eye Zombie. Do <laughs> Madman. I'm so excited that he's doing those things. I mean, like I love Madman, but there's there's plenty of Madman comics. There is plenty of Madman comics, but my whole thing is, you know, like I get that he has the clout to kind of do whatever he wants to do, mm-hmm. you know, whatever pleases him. That's cool, but you know. I always appreciate it when I see creators do their own thing. Yeah. No, yeah. yeah. I mean, there's just some Even creators... Even if he doesn't want to do Batman ever again, I'd like to see him do his new thing. Oh, yeah. I yeah. see what you mean. Yeah. Like, like it's like when... Like Paul Grist. Yeah. Like when he's doing his own... Yeah. I, I, uh... Which apparently he constantly is, uh, just never sees the light of day. Right. <laughs> anyway. He's working on it. Yeah. Thing. Well, see, like, Mike Howard's one of those guys who... I'm just glad he's doing something because he, to me he's in that whole realm of people like there's a lot of artists that I love that just seem like they hardly ever do anything. Right. Like like uh Paul Chadwick's another one. Like I I love it's that guy. Been a while since he's done the thing. Yeah. Like uh, I think he did like a very short concrete thing like five years ago. Right. Yeah. yeah, and like I love his concrete stuff, but I would you know if he, if he decided to do a Green Lantern comic, I would I would read that too, but. Right. But I would be much more excited for him to do concrete, so I understand. That, that, that's yeah. yeah but 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 with Allred, I'm just excited he's doing something because right. to me he's he's right in there with that group of people that I'm like, I'm surprised that he's prolific as he is. I mean, he has never stopped. Like he kind of stopped for a while. Did he? Yeah. Man, I don't know. There's there's I mean, so many books. It was. I mean, I think X Force, Ecstatics is oh, like yeah. one of those things that got him to sort of reignite himself a little bit. Oh, yeah. But, like, there was a period of time where there was, like, years between issues of Mad Men. Right. When that was what he was doing. And then, like, he, like, would do, like, two issues and then, like, oh, wait, I'm gonna do Red Rocket 7. Yeah, and, right. And then, you know, kind of stopped. And was like, oh, I'm gonna do the Golden Plates and never finish that, I guess. <sighs> I don't know. I never paid attention to that. Was, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. But then, like, he started doing X-Force and then almost since then, it's, like, Constant. At least a steady stream of, of all red stuff oh, out I, there. I wonder if that time period, though, where he was less active, was, was that when he was working on his movie, maybe? Yeah, he was doing the movie a little bit, too, and then uh, his, uh, his band a little bit. But, uh, yeah, yeah he, he, he was having his midlife crisis. He had to, probably. He had to get his band out there and I his guess, movie uh, yeah. out there. Yeah. Well, I'm glad he, I'm glad he uh, got back into comics. Like I said, I am happily and excitedly buying Bug. Mm-hmm. Uh, but. Madman. Yeah. I got you. Yeah. But yeah, Young Animal. That's the uh, the uh, new DC imprint uh, curated by Gerard Way of uh, My Chemical Romance fame. Mm-hmm. Uh, which uh, probably will be the band that we listen to here uh, shortly. Uh, no. No? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I like a lot of things he's done, and hardly any of those things are music. <laughs> Umbrella Academy, awesome. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think we've reviewed both of those. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. 
I don't I don't hate his band. I mean, they're no Coldplay or anything, but they're they're but they're not great. <laughs> I was, just, I was just trying to think of the shittiest band I could think of, like off the top of my head, and, and it went Coldplay. It's pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah. I mean, I I would prefer to never hear uh, My Chemical Romance. Uh, right. Song yeah. Ever. Yeah. But, I'd, I'd rather listen to a, a Weird Al B side sure. than the best Chemical Romance song. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but no, yeah. As far as uh, comics go. Uh, He's got yeah, he's a pretty great. solid track record. Right. I totally love his comics. And, uh, you can definitely tell that he's got a love for, for the medium. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, apparently somebody high up at DC said, hey, we should uh, let him have a bunch of obscure characters. Yeah. Whatever he wants with. Now, did that happen when they thought they were getting rid of Vertigo? Is that why that happened? I don't know. Because I thought that that was the plan, is they, they were done with Vertigo. Like, it was they were wrapping up books that were still going, and then they were done... Yeah, I'm not sure what the Vertigo situation is. Because mm-hmm. the editor, Kim, what's her name? Top, uh, Kim Berger? Kim, wasn't it Kim? Uh, Kim, wasn't it Kim something? Uh, are you thinking of Karen Berger? Karen Berger, that's who it is. Yeah. Didn't she, she passed away, right? No. What? No, 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 no. What? Yeah, she, she is, uh, alive and well. And what, did she quit or something? She, I retired? Think she either left or got fired. Oh, okay. Sure. Uh, but then she kind of just went away for a little while, and she's now uh, editing Surgeon X from uh, Image. Okay. Huh. Yeah, that's like her big comics comeback. Uh, Weird. Shelley Bond was was uh, a higher up uh, Vertigo editor that got fired, I guess, when they were starting to downsize Vertigo, uh, like last year or whatever. She started her own imprint, uh, I think, at IDW, called Black Crown, hmm. uh, which uh, I think their first book is a Peter Milligan book. Oh, wow. Uh, and uh, Philip Bond, her husband, is, is involved somewhere, which if it means a new Philip Bond comic he's, out there, he's great. I will be super excited about that. Yeah, he's awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I was I was thinking, yeah, I was thinking that it was like... It was still around. Yeah, I, but I thought they were going to... And, uh, and then they started adding, like, I thought they were finishing up books like, you know, like, I don't know, uh, Sheriff of Babylon and books that were long going, right. and, and I thought they were going to end it, but then they, they started all these new books, yeah. like s- Savage Things and whatnot, and I was yeah. like, I don't know, I, I thought Young Animal was replacing Vertigo for some yeah, reason. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, yeah, I don't know what the, what the Vertigo deal is now. Uh, I've heard good things about Savage Things, and mm-hmm. Sheriff of Babylon, I think, is actually just uh, taking a hiatus right now. Mm. I think they're going to come back with a second volume of that at some point. Okay. Because the, the two creators of that are doing the new Miracle. I don't want to see Miracle Man every time. Mm. Mr. Miracle. Mr. Miracle. Book that was uh, recently announced. Right. Uh, and uh, yeah, Gail Simone's got that uh, Clean Room. Clean Room. I've heard that's really good. But yeah, I have, I have I not read it. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. Lucifer, you know, <coughs> right. which I honestly don't have much interest in because it's not in my carry version. Right. Yeah. Which, it, at least I can say for this, it, it does not appear to be the Fox TV version either. <laughs> so, <you know. laughs> uh, so yeah, I, I don't know uh, what the deal with uh, Young Animal is, but it does have a couple of titles which, which share... A lineage with Vertigo. Yeah. Such as uh, Doom Patrol and uh, Shade the Changing Man. Yeah. Which uh, we are reading Shade the Changing Girl. Yeah, we are. Yeah. Uh, are you... Are there any young animal books you're not picking up? Um, I've read at least the first issue of all of them. Okay. But um, Mother Panic, I read the first issue and, and it was the only one that I was just like, eh, it's it's okay. Like, so I, did, I didn't read any more Mother Panic. Um, like, I didn't hate it or anything, but it just, like, all the rest of them are weird and fun. And that one was just kind of dark and, like, okay. just kind of, cool. yeah. yeah. And I was just like, eh, it's, I've read enough stuff like that. Right, like, right. Yeah. 
Um, but yeah, like I love everything else so far that I've read. Yeah, that's cool. Cape Carson and Doom Patrol and Bug. Yeah. Yeah, I've been picking up everything. Uh, but, but, uh, this is the first one that I've, I've sat down and read at least most of the issues that are out right, right now. So, so I don't. I'm not, you're you're about to say something. Oh no! no I, was, uh, I think I was just about to fart. Oh, okay. <laughs> Can I wait. No, no, no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was going to say something, but I decided against it. So. Are you sure? Yeah. Yeah. What were you going to say? No, I was. You said you said this is the one that you well, you hated you hated it. No. I don't know how I felt about it. Oh, okay. Because that's a good thing. I guess. It usually is a good thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, cause, cause I think the thing that this has going against it, it has nothing to do with the creation of it. Mm-hmm. Like, like the, 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 the creative team, uh, Cecil Castellucci and Marley Zarconi. Well, we always have names we can't pronounce. Uh-huh. Why don't we just read books by Roy Thomas and Don Heck? Let's do that from now on. Yeah. 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 I swear to God, if you throw a Tom Orzakowski in there. <laughs> I don't know how to spell that. Keep your fucking Bill Sinkoviches away. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so, so nothing that, that the creators of this book, you know, did, but, Shade the Changing Man is probably in my top ten favorite comics of all time. Right, yeah. And there is a lot of preconceived notions that I have oh, yeah. that this book has to live up to. Sure. Even though they clearly are going for something completely different. Yeah. And I respect and admire that. Like they're not trying to recreate their own version of the other one. Right. Yeah. But it is a shadow looming over <laughs> everything that I read. I know I, I I totally get that because I love <laughs> I loved that book too. But luckily for me, my book like that was Doom Patrol. Right. Um. That was my like that was the book that got me to work at a comic book shop just so I could afford to buy Doom Patrols and, and just they were there. Right. And, you know. Um. So when I started reading the new Doom Patrol, I had the exact same feeling, but I tried to divorce it in my mind from the other series. Right. And it, and it is like, it, I think it's, the new series is great, yeah. but I don't think it's anywhere near as good as the original. Sure. I think my, my relationship with the Doom Patrol is like, I love the Grant Morrison series, obviously. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I've also liked other versions of the Doom Patrol. Yeah. So like for me, it's easier to get into that. Right. Cause right. 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 But there's only been, well, there's been, there's been two Shady two Shader other. Man series. Yeah. Uh, the one Ditko was and... <laughs> Ditko from 40 years ago. Uh, and then, I mean, but literally when you think about it, for the last 30 years, Peter Milligan has written every appearance of Shady Shader. Right, right. For the yeah. Most part. Except for your fan fiction. Hey, well, sure. Yeah. <laughs> is it called Slash Fiction? Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. yeah. 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 <laughs> um, so, so... Like, one man has controlled the destiny of that one character for, for such a long time, even though, like, he didn't do anything with the character for decades. Right. Like, when, you know, DC 52 restarted again, like, the books that Peter Milligan wrote had Shane the Changing Man in it. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. And, so, it really is hard. And even, like, uh, yeah, during Milligan's Hellblazer run, I think we reviewed the, that, uh, oh, yeah. Uh-huh. That Wait, he, right. Yeah. Uh, right. <laughs> but this one is kind of like, like the main character, um, starts calling herself, oh, I forget, it's something shade. I forget Loma what. Loma shade. Loma shade. Yeah, Loma. And, uh, and like even, even she like talks about how she's like a follower of Rack Shade and right. she reads his poetry and, you know, so it, it is, it does come across as not like, I'm the new shade. Right. As so much as, like, I worship this, this other, yeah. you know, version of shade. And, 
So it is it is cool that it's like I don't know. It's more like an homage. Than it, it is. is. And, and like I said, it, it, I, I respect that they do seem to be trying, you know, something different with it, mm-hmm. going with a different direction. Because I mean, the the original shade was very dark. Oh yeah. You know. I know. I'd forgotten how dark. I reread some of American Scream uh, earlier this year, yeah. and it was so much darker than I remembered. Oh yeah, yeah. Like I remember. The, some of the later ones that are just kind of more weird. Right. Um, like when it had the vertigo imprint on it. Yeah. But um, I think I actually like the later ones better like than American Scream. I think, like, I like the series entirely, but uh, it definitely does pick up uh, you know, later in its run. And it, like, it almost, well, the American Scream storyline went on it was like two years. Yeah, it was like 20-something, yeah, 24 yeah. issues, yeah. So, like, once you move past that, like, I think it really, to like take off and, and do weird things, yeah, you know. You know. Uh, but at the same time, like you know, those first twenty some issues, like do inform right all the characters, right? right. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so you know, yeah, like like I said, I, they're, they're clearly doing something different here, and, and it's a different type of story. Oh yeah, uh, but I almost feel like. Maybe it would be better off without having, you know, the, the, skin the shade. shade on it. I don't know. Yeah. I don't think I would have read it if it was just, you know. I don't. Yeah. Well, if it was called I Alien Girl. Yeah. It. Right. I I really liked it. Um, but yeah, it is completely different, and it and it and it is more of a story about. Um, it's almost like it's like a teenage coming of age. Story yeah, it really is. Yeah, through like the eyes of a, an alien creature. And it's so fitting, too, because, I mean, there's so many stories about high school and, like, what an alien world it is, because, right. you know, suddenly, you like, your whole life you've been a, a child, and now all of a sudden you're like, okay, this is the year that you're supposed to, you know, learn about your, you know, figure out your future and learn to drive, and, like, you're right. probably going to have sex and smoke pot, and, like, all these all these things. Yeah. And uh, it is, like, this alien world, and I love how they keep um, toggling back from... Um, Oh, I forget the name of the planet. Uh, uh, Meta. Yeah. Um, and toggling back from that to Earth, where Loma Shade is now on Earth, and they toggle back to Meta, where they're trying to figure out who stole the dream coat, the madness coat. Right. And um, and all this stuff on the other planet, on Meta, is so much more like straightforward and normal, even though everybody looks weird, they're all aliens, right. and like, and it's insane, like, you know, technology and environments. But on Earth, is like all the crazy madness stuff that's happening, and it, I I love that about this series where all the Earth stuff is like the more insane stuff, the of the alien worlds. I think that's really neat. It is, and uh, but I'm gonna say this that too much of the meta stuff. Too much. Yeah, yeah. like I don't know. It's one of those things where it's like, well, I don't need to know like the origins and like you know. Where she comes from, or, or her people. See, or I like, like that. I, I like all this stuff, but like the stuff where it has like the dude that helped her get the madness coat. Um, I hesitate to call her to call him her boyfriend because I think she was just using him yeah. to get the madness coat. Um, he was a security guard at a at a museum, and she like like hung out with him there, and I think they had sex, and then uh, yeah. she she talked him into opening the case that had the madness coat. Right. So she kind of manipulated that dude. But I actually love the stuff with, like, him and his band and all that stuff. Like, I would just read a series about them. They're just stoner alien dudes. Yeah, I would love uh, to read a series about, like, what kind of weird drugs are these aliens doing? This is interesting. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Like, like, because with, again, you know, it just keeps going back to the original Shade. Like, you know, we never knew what he looked like. On his planet. Yeah. Like, we never saw his planet. Right. Like, I honestly just never assumed it was a planet. I just thought it was sort of just a weird... Like a realm of madness. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah I I did too. And so, some of that just kind of... It's like pulling back the curtain too far. A little bit, yeah. Uh, like, just too explainy. I, I like it, though. Like, I like how, since this is a different series, I like how they're doing it differently. Yeah. Like, I, I like that. But I do like all the Earth stuff, for sure. Mm-hmm. Uh, just, uh, 
you know, and, and I get, you know, like like what you just mentioned, like how Loma uh, used, you know, that, that guy, you know, to, to steal the dream, you know, or the, the madness vest, uh, you know, like parallels with how, like, the, the person that uh, Loma has taken over, uh, Megan Boyer, yeah, uh, is basically just a massive cunt. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, if you don't know the shade history, basically, they can... Shades like jump into people's bodies as they're dying, basically. Basically, yeah. Uh, usually coma victims, or uh, I think there was uh, like, like a guy, an electric chair guy in the American Scream, right? Yeah, and then the, there was the, the uh, like basically uh, like a, a mentally uh, disabled person who basically was just not there. I right. Think called them deeps. Em- empty. Empty. Uh, 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 but yeah, yeah, so basically a person who basically is just sort of... At death's door. Life and death. And, and uh, that's that's who she jumped in and at the beginning of the series. Yeah. Megan was swimming and taking too many pills and... Something. Got her into a coma. We, we don't know the full story of what exactly happened. Yeah, they kind of allude to it here and there. But basically, uh, she is uh, a very popular uh, student... Uh, who was also hated by most because right. she is a massive bully. Oh, yeah. 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 She's like a Heather from the movie Heathers, if you've ever seen Heather. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and her friends also not that great either. Right, yeah. yeah. But uh, they, they are mere minions compared to her. I like, yeah. I, I like the... Is it a... I, I honestly don't know if it was supposed to be a female or a male character, River. Um, I thought it for the longest time. I thought it was a female, and then the, something happened where I was like, "Oh wait a minute, that's that's a dude." No, uh, yeah, I think it's supposed to be a dude. Okay. I mean, River is kind of a yeah I a female name. Yeah, and and River dresses and has a haircut that's kind of androgynous. So I wasn't sure, yeah. Yeah. but um, but I like that character. Yeah. River State School. And teacup. Teacup is nice too. I yeah, like teacup. And Megan's uh, uh, pre. Coma boyfriend Wes. Mm-hmm. He, he also seems like not a totally terrible dude. Right, yeah. He's just a dumb guy. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. So she jumps into this body and, uh, and, um, the hospital alerts her parents that she's out of the coma and to please come get her. And then basically the rest of the series, that, or at least the part that we read, is just about her trying to, like, cope with yeah she's now an earthling and she's in high school and she's you know doesn't remember anyone and like you know they think it's because she's had brain damage but it's because there's a different person in this body and like she gets glimpses of uh, what Megan's life was but not enough to form like you know full connections to anything right uh, and she still has like tinges of madness going through her mind where yeah. the things look a little surreal and like psychedelic and yeah and there were, there were a few, okay, the only thing I really didn't like about this series was there's a few times where it does this thing where I don't, I don't like this in comics where there's like two different narration bubbles going on yeah. and you're just, and it toggles back and forth and it, to me, there shouldn't be that, like that just, yeah. it confuses me. Maybe I'm an idiot, but it takes a lot of effort, I think, to pull that off well. Mm-hmm. And, and yeah, I think in this case like for me i got confused at times yeah i mean admittedly we're both dumb oh yeah so it's it's scientifically it's documented yeah. definitely some user error right yeah <laughs> but yeah i i don't like i i love it i absolutely love it in comics when there's a narration from like an off panel person over like wordless um panels that tell a story Right. Like when when the, when all the words are telling one story and all the pictures are telling another story, yeah. I like that. Yeah. But whenever there's like two the different, yeah, captions. yeah. I mean, even if they, even if they color code them, sometimes it's just it's just in your head the rhythm is wrong and yeah. you just I don't know I don't I don't like that. And especially like if you're not exactly sure which color belongs to which. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah, because sometimes there'll be those kind of narration things and then. You know, all of a sudden there's like three pages of just characters exposition and right. without narration. And then it switches back and you're like, wait a minute, so who said that now? Right. Like you have to flip back and see what 
color was yeah I don't know I don't like I don't like that. I mean, yeah, I certainly didn't dislike this book at all. Mm-hmm. You know, like like I thought. I mean, yeah, pretty much everything goes back to just me and my own preconceived notions about what right. the shade, the changing person title it should be, right? And, and it's different. And like I said, like I think the story that they're telling is interesting. Uh, it definitely has a lot of potential. Oh, yeah. And I absolutely probably would not have picked this up if it was just, you know, Alien Bird Girl. Right, yeah. You know, yeah, The Adventures of Loma. Or right, something. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, you know, but, but I think you can say that about almost any, you know, Marvel or DC book. Like, you know, oh, sure. some might have some good concepts that you would never read anywhere else right. it wasn't you know Black Panther or you know that's whatever, true you know? Mm-hmm. so so there is something behind name recognition for sure huh I guess they should uh, they, sh- they should copyright those names right <laughs> and then use them to, to market other products probably we should write that down <laughs> send them a little free advice <laughs> no I totally agree I would I probably wouldn't read it either yeah because I'm I, like I usually either follow artists or writers. I don't necessarily even follow characters other than maybe Batman. I, I'm always okay. I'm always looking for a Batman story that I want to read. I don't read it, everything Batman or like yeah, like. Yeah. But I'm always looking for a good Batman book, and totally it's just it, yeah. it's just hard liver comes out. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, yeah I'm with you. like 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 there are definitely a few characters that like I really like. Depending on who is writing or drawing them, like I'll pick it up. Right. Uh, but like I definitely mostly follow, you know, writers or artists. Right. And I think what you're getting to is unfamiliarity. Yeah. With, uh, Cecil Castellucci and, and Marley Zarcon. Yeah, I'm, I'm not familiar with them, but they did a good job. Yeah. Um, I I thought it was a great series with like weird, like it had plenty of weird. I love weird in comics. Right. Um, it had. Really good artwork, cartoony, had all these things I like. Um, it, it, okay, there was one other negative thing. I think it, it wrapped up a little quick, I thought. Yeah. Like, I thought it just kind of like, all of a sudden, um, she fought in her mind the, like, the spirit of Megan, yeah. who was like, um, she, she fought her and then basically everything was back to normal right before issue six ended, right before the trade paperback ends. Right, right. And I thought it was a little too, it just felt a little too, like, convenient and like let's wrap this up I I think part of it also is that uh, the the threat of evil Megan's spirit didn't really show up until like the fifth issue yeah yeah it wasn't like should have been maybe built up exactly yeah it wasn't it wasn't like it wasn't teased at all it was just kind of like all of a sudden it's there and this is the big because yeah the first maybe four issues it's more just about the weirdness of being in that human body. It's like a slice of life. Yeah. And, and I think around, like, issue three or issue four, I was like, what's the threat here? Right. Like, I mean, you know, there's sort of, like, the nebulous threat of, like, the evil scientist guy from the planet Meta. See, that's what I... I, I was fine... I'd be fine with that if, like, the entire, like, first storyline was just this guy is gonna retrieve her and, like, or do something to her body which right. kills her. You know, like, that was... To me, that was a threat enough. They, I didn't think they really needed to do the Spirit of Megan thing. Well, I think they needed to do one or the other mm-hmm. because they just kind of kept dragging the, the evil scientist guy out. Right. But never really doing anything with it. Right. Like, you know, it, it became, you know, a slice of life on meta. Yeah. That subplot. I, I love that, too. I love but that stuff. Did. Uh... But, you know, yeah, it was like, I mean, I know that there's not going to be a super villain per se, but, but there needs to be some sort of, you know, threat other than, you know, this girl was a bad person and now she's yeah. kind of okay, but she's really weird. Her friends don't really like her. Right. She's not going to be on the swim team anymore. That's the threat. Right? Yeah. Um, yeah, all the meta stuff, it was probably, I don't, I don't want to say it's my favorite, but I, I love that they kept giving you more of it. Um, and it reminded me, it reminded me so much of a Gilbert Hernandez comic. Mm-hmm. Like it seemed like, like 
like there is there is even like a backup story in one of them by Gilbert Hernandez. Yes. Um, but I think all the meta stuff reminded me of his style of of comic storytelling. I think yeah, this definitely has uh, kind of a almost Love and Rockets kind of feel to it, mm-hmm. which which is cool. Yeah. Which which has an odd pace, yeah, like right. a very non traditional pacing. Right. Uh, and yeah. So so there are also backup stories in this. Oh yeah. I'd forgotten about that until I said the Gilbert Hernandez one. I mostly didn't care for the backup stories. I didn't either. I did um, like the Gilbert Hernandez one. Yeah, that one was the best. Like, it was funny and then just kind of weird. And then the others were almost too weird for me to really care. Yeah, I, I felt like I was missing something on all the backup stories. Like, yeah. I was like, am I supposed to know these characters? Or, like, is this something referencing something? Or, right. Like, there was the... I think the... Only other one that I kind of enjoyed, and I say kind of, uh, was the the one that was about the uh, TV show that uh, Shade was uh, obsessed with. Oh yeah, L- uh, Honey, Life yeah, with Honey. Life with honey. Yeah. yeah, that one was the better of the other ones. Right. Where she like pops out of the cake and embarrasses. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but then also there was the the Kyle H for Hero, which was just fucking weird. Yeah. Kind of pretentious. Yeah. Not great. Yeah, the backup stories, I, I kind of, for, until I mentioned the Gilbert Hernandez thing, I forgot there even were yeah. backup stories. It just, it was such an, I don't know, like a, just an afterthought. So, yeah, disconnected. And I even counted, I was like, D- are they doing those because the, the comic is shorter than it's supposed to be? But it was a 22 page story, the Shade right. book, and then there was still a backup story, so at least it's a bonus thing, but. Right. But yeah, yeah most of them I just, I, I mean, you know, whatever. They were just okay, right? right. Like when, when when I read I mean the first one is the, the Hernandez one. Uh like I read that and I was like, Oh, this must be just kind of like a here's a weird funny story about you know the planet Meta and yeah. some of its citizens and you know like, Oh, Gilbert Hernandez, like is he gonna do all of them? Yeah. That... Are they just gonna get other like awesome like indie creators <laughs> to do something? Right. And like after that it was just kind of like nope. Yeah, it was it was yeah. Yeah. Like, I think Cecil Castellucci wrote the Life with Honey one, mm-hmm. and then, like, I didn't recognize any of the people who did. Right. Others, so. Yeah, and if we don't recognize you, you're no good. Exactly. <laughs> you're bewildering fodder. Yeah. No. No, I, I love <laughs> reading stuff by people I've never heard of. No, yeah. But, but, um, we both do. But, but yeah, it's just, no, the backup stories were just kind of mediocre. Right. I mean, you know. If I've never heard of you and you wrote a backup story and it's amazing, I've heard of you now. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. But we've never heard of these people. Yep. We, we, for, we forgot their names. Yep. Sorry. Sorry, people. Yep. Sorry, guys. Try harder. <laughs> Better luck next time. You're not here to impress us, though. Don't worry. We wish, uh, we wish everyone luck. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I would definitely, I'm, I would definitely continue reading this book. Uh, like, like there are a lot of interesting things and interesting places it could go. Uh, and, and like I said, it is ninety percent on me to really divorce myself from right. the shade. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, like this also really made me want to go reread. Yeah. The entire shit. Right. Of it does mean to you. I think one of these, one of the things with you know, them calling it shade though, to me it's more like, they're like, hey, you remember that cool weird thing you liked? Yeah. We're doing a cool weird thing. Yeah. Like, they're basically not saying, you know, we're doing the same book, we're, you know, which, you know, uh, you know, is a good thing. Yeah. We can both respect that, I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, I, if this was Shade the Changing Man in volume two or Shade the Changing Boy, you know, like, I think I would definitely have more negative, you know, preconceived notions uh, about it before was, reading it. If it was Shade the Change of Man Rebirth. Yeah, yeah. Uh, or just, like, a, you know, replace Loma with, like, a teenage boy. Right. You know. Like, yeah, I like it. Like, it's so much cooler that it's a girl. Right. Like, as different as it can be from the other one is, is, a, is a good thing. Yeah. So. I mean, yeah, like, uh... If, and because it was Shade the Changing Girl, I was like, well, that's interesting. You know, okay, I'll pick this up. Especially at a point in time where I'm not really reading anything by DC. 
Right. It's yeah. Like, like I am getting all the young animal books. Yeah, me too. Then, like the Batman sixty six books. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they're doing a Batman Legion coming up. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. You know, I I was thinking about this the other day. I was I redid my file card and I have like eight comics that I buy and I think five of them have the word girl in the title. Uh-huh. Did I tell you that? No. There's uh, Unbeatable Squirrel Girl. Sure. Shade the Changing Girl. Okay. Paper Girls. Uh-huh. Snot Girl. Uh-huh. And I think that might be it. Um, I think we've read most of these for the show. Yeah. But, I mean, there's also like Silver Surfer and Doom Patrol, but... Silver Surfer Girl and Doom Patrol Girl. Oh, they both do kind of... St- the, like The main yeah. stars are, are ladies. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So, yeah. I don't know. I, so I like girls. I like girls. You're becoming a girl. Um, you're becoming a teenage girl. I, I, yeah. Loma Shade jumped into my body when I was asleep. I wasn't in a coma. I just fell asleep watching Alien. <laughs> um, and I also will say that, unfortunately, I bought the only copy of Shade Number 8 that sold at, at Mavericks oh, last, 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 the current issue. Man, yeah. Yeah, because I did the count. I was doing previews orders today, and I had to count the previous issue. And I think we had sold at least two copies of every issue before that. It had been declining as it goes, but yeah, the latest issue was just me. Damn. Yeah. I, mean, I can't imagine that you were ordering a ton of copies. I mean, I think we ordered ten of the first one, right. and we maybe sold five of them. Yeah. And like, basically, it kept going down by like, you know, yeah. yeah. So. Um, but yeah, I'll still order two copies and keep one on the shelf and I'll still buy them. So. Yeah, well that's good. So if you're looking for shade, you can still come to Mavericks and check yeah, it out. Yeah. That's, you know, but again, also does not surprise me considering the clientele. Right. Yeah. yeah, well I mean, it's mostly superior. Dude. I did on a, uh, I think it was Friday, a guy came in and bought Shade the Changing Men trade paperbacks yeah. two and three. Nice. Um, and I told him, I was like, hey, if you haven't read the new series, I was like, it's really good. And he had, and he hadn't even heard of the new series. Uh-huh. Like, he wasn't buying the Shade Trades because of this, which okay. that's, like, I assumed at first I asked him, I said, oh, are you, you reading the new series? And he's like, no, 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 what, what is that? And I was like, oh, man, it's really good. So maybe that guy will buy them, too. See, when, when I hear something like that, I also am curious, like, okay, so why is he buying Shade Changing? I know, right? Right. Yeah, and he was a younger guy. I like he'd say he's like early twenties, so yeah. I wonder where he maybe But then again at the same time, you know, when I was twenty and scouring corner boxes for, you know, issues of Shade the Changer Man, you know. Right. Like, where the hell had I ever heard of it? Right, and, yeah. It was because somebody recommended it to me. Right. But where the hell did he hear here? It's <laughs> <laughs> probably like an older brother or sibling or something. Uh, actually it was uh my friend Bruce turned mm-hmm. out to it because uh Chris Pacello. I don't know. So yeah. that was, I think, Chris Pichello's first big comic first. That's the first time I heard of him. Yeah. That and Death, which I think was after. Yeah. Right. yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, my, my friend Bruce is a giant, was a giant Chris Pichello fan. But then he lost a lot of weight. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's good. <laughs> Chris Pichello did. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think that also is, uh, you know, maybe something that kind of sticks with me in this. Uh, that uh, you know, Mar- Marley Zircon is a fine co- uh, cartoonist. Yeah, you know, and, and good storyteller. Handles like the weird stuff very, very well. Uh, but you know, the original Shade had uh, Chris Pichello, yeah, Brendan McCarthy, and, <laughs> yeah, uh, Duncan Figueredo. Yeah, <laughs> you're saying those all artists all had penises. Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah, and that's why you exactly. That's why saying. you respect them. Yep. No, those guys all are like exceptional artists, and and Zarcone is is Marley Zarcone a female? I don't even know. I would assume, but, but um, I don't know for sure. yeah. but yeah, definitely competent artist and storyteller. But there, you know, there are a couple pages that there's like one in particular in my mind. There's like a two page splash page that's just like you know faces and weird things, and it's the madness. Yeah. And and like if you look at that, and you just for a second. Think of what it would look like if Brendan McCarthy had drawn it. Right, yeah. yeah, I mean it's it's like real, it's minimal. Like yeah, Zarconi, yeah. uh, Zarconi's style is minimal. Yeah, and yeah. and like when you're doing something with madness, you yeah, think of like be, crazy detail yeah, and whatever. Yeah. So it's a different style, and yeah, you know, yeah. 
I'm I'm gonna stick with it though. I I really like this. Like movie. I said, I'll continue reading it. It definitely has a lot of potential to be really good. Mm-hmm. Uh, but it, yeah, it's it's all on me pretty much. That <laughs> I just keep thinking about Shade the Changer Man. Right. It's hard not to once you've, you know, I don't know. Well, like I said, I, I do enjoy it for what it is, which is basically you know the the, the, the drama. Yeah, basically. right. It's like a really well done teen drama. Yeah. And, and as a, someone who does not give a fuck about teens, yeah, <laughs> saying something, right? I don't know your internet search history doesn't confirm that theory. It's all fairly legal. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so yeah, twenty is not fifteen. Yeah, yeah, you're you're fine. Nothing yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. nothing wrong with twenty two years. Old. <laughs> oh, should we take a break? Yeah, All let's right. do that. Yeah, we went we went south. <laughs> We start itself. <laughs> we'll be back. And I know life is better when it hurts me, and it hurts a little harder with you. But I just keep on searching just to find love at the bottom of the bed. Of the bed. Oh. Back to gutter trash. Hello. <laughs> that was like, oops. 
Oh, is that not right? Is it not the podcast we're doing? <laughs> uh, no, this is the podcast we're doing. Yes, we podcast are. Podcast we've always done. Yeah. Lots of episodes. Yeah, we have. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, what's that? Uh, uh, we did a comic convention, <laughs> as we always do. Sort of. Yeah. You did, for right. sure. Yeah. Well, you were there. I was there, for sure. Well. Oh, there's three different capacities we tend to do shows in. Uh, exhibitor, uh, dealer, and customer. Yeah. So, yeah, you know. It's true. Yeah. We just toggle between those. I, is this, um, did I make a drinking game out of the word toggle this episode? I think it's the third time I've used the word toggle. I don't know. I wish. So, uh, if you're playing at home, sure. yeah, if you're playing at home, uh, make sure you take a, take a beer bong hit. Yeah. After every time you hit <laughs> toggle. Because it's only been three or four times. Yeah, yeah. five. No. You wouldn't get very drunk with just the shots. Well, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Depends on if you're how yeah, old you are. We've been talking for like an hour. <laughs> yeah, so, that's true. Yeah. It's probably not. But so, yeah, so Sunday I was a I was a dealer and you were a customer. Yeah. And like even you were a customer at our dealer table. I did. Yeah. I did. Just you, something from you guys, yeah. which is rare. Yeah. <laughs> Usually, just come by and make fun of our paltry booth. Pretty much, and yeah. go over to a better one. Pokemon uh, plushies. <laughs> yeah. We actually had a lot of comics this time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, unfortunately, you were trying to rip people off. Of course. So I said, I'm not gonna purchase any comic book oh. from here. Oh yeah, it's because we had we had a book. What was it? We had a Marvel Comics hardcover. Yeah. Like the reprint of the old vent, like a Human Torch story. Yeah, Marvel Comics number one. Oh yeah. We had it priced at one price, but then we had it in a box that was marked higher. Yep. <laughs> so <that> was, yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we need to do what we can to get by. <laughs> a new magic set doesn't come out every week. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, I mean, you had some stuff that I was definitely, like, yeah, I kind of don't want that, but at mm. the same time, Trying to be a little cautious. Yeah. Right. I, I don't think I spent more than six, seven dollars there total anywhere. Mm-hmm. And that's with the dollar that I spent at your, <laughs> your booth. What did you buy? I'm trying to remember. I bought a card. Oh, that's right. I, bought a, uh, I, was, trying, I was like, what comic did you buy for a dollar? I bought a foil, a chrome foil Jack Kirby Tops card. Yeah. Captain Glory. Man. Uh,. Comic trading card insert cards did really well for us at that show. Like, in addition to your dollar, right. we had a guy spend $38 on comic cards, like insert cards, which that never happens. Like, right. we've, we've had a giant box of those at our store for, like, two years now, and I think maybe total we sold $10 out of it ever. I, I think the problem is that uh, nobody knows where it's at. <laughs> I know where it's at. Maybe your customers know <laughs> where it's at. Well, we we just put it somewhere where they can't touch them, but we surround it by like complete sets of comic cards. Right. So that like my thing is like whenever anyone asks to look at the comic cards, I always point out the, the inserts. Yeah. I'm like, hey, we also have these, okay. but but we don't want to leave them out because people would steal them. Sure, because it's just people were. Yeah, I mean, because because I've definitely dove through the uh, was it the, the ten cent uh, comic card. Oh. Box, uh, the last couple months. Yeah. Like, I, I think I bought like $30 worth of those cards recently. Wow. Uh, I've, strangely enough, been on a weird non sports card trading card <laughs> uh, kick. What else did you buy? Uh, from uh, GameSwap, I bought like uh, every pack of Mars Attacks cards that they had. Oh, wow. Uh, the, uh, the 1997 series or whatever that they put out. Those were fun. Yeah, oh yeah. I like those. Fun. Yeah. There were some Simon Bisley cards in there. There was indeed. Yeah. Uh, yeah, some really good artists uh, did some stuff there. With them. And plus, they reprinted all the original Mars Attacks cards, too. So it was like that. Oh, uh, yeah. Like they have the 50s cards. ones, yeah. 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 Dead Dog. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, and then I bought, like, every Marvel Universe Series 2 Art Adams card. Oh, wow. Those yeah. are good. Yeah. <laughs> Did you hear about, this is uh, something that I just heard about when I was filling out the previews order, Marvel is is doing Jim Lee comic card variant covers? Yep. 
I wonder what Jim Lee thinks about that. I don't know. I'm sure he's getting paid. So. I don't know. I mean, it's all old artwork, and they it's all. Pay him for do they? Okay. Stuff, yeah. I did not know how that works. Do they have to? Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, I guess it's especially someone like Jim Lee. They would have to. You yeah. think? I, I just wonder if it was one of those things where, you know, in the 90s, he did the art for him. They're like, hey, we own this art from now on. And right. he'd be like, okay, fine. Yeah, yeah but, I'm sure he was smarter than that. I'm sure he is still making money off of X-Men reprints. Wow, really? Uh, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Well, good for him. Yeah. But it's funny because, like, now you think of him as just a DC guy, Wildstorm yeah. DC guy, and you're like, how did Marvel get him to do variant covers? But it's, it's old artwork that yep. he, he did in the 90s. Yep. And it is exactly those. It's the old, like, the X-Men series trading cards that he drew. Mm-hmm. He drew all of them. That's a great set. It was. I, I bought a pa- I bought a box mm-hmm. like, the week that it came wow. out. It was awesome. That's how much I liked Jim Lee back then. Was it the blue one or the red one? Because they had two different sets. I like the blue one. That has the Beast as card number one. And it's like a sideways card of him oh, jumping. Yeah. That's my favorite. That's, that's what I have. Okay. Because he did, he did two sets. Of, did yeah, he did a. There's one of the red card front, and then like the blue ones. Like I... the blue ones. The you don't believe me? I do not. Well, we've had both of them at my store. Uh, the blue one's the best one now. Well, that's that's the one I bought. Dude. Yeah. I'm pretty sure that was the only one he did. Yeah, there's there's there's, there's two of them. Talking about how the blue fronts uh, were the heroes and the red ones were the villains. I don't think so. I think there's two different sets. Uh, um, but are you buying any of his variants that have no? Okay, yeah, God no. <laughs> well, first of all, I'd have to be buying a Marvel comic. Oh, oh well, yeah, that's true. Uh, and second of all, I uh, aren't pretty much every Marvel variants like thirteen dollars or more to buy. Uh, I don't know how much these are going to be because we Marvel's so weird with their variants. We we base ours on what they're actively selling for on eBay at the time of release, so we don't we won't know for two months what we're going to sell them for. But they they're doing this weird thing. It's like if you if you order ninety percent or more of you know Astonishing X Men number one that you ordered of you know uh, Wolverine Oldman Logan number seventeen, you can order as many of the variant as you want. And so like it's it's like an algebra equation to decide if you even want to order it. And then and then like once once we can order it, it's like okay, well I've already had to order. You know, 15 copies of this book that we're going to sell 15 copies of, so maybe I'll just order one of the variant. Like, like even though I'm allowed to, they graciously have allowed me to order their product as many as I want. It's like, I don't know, it's just ridiculous. So, there's a few of them that we ordered between one and three copies of, but most of them we were at zero of because, you know, we, just, we don't want them. So, first of all, the part of it is that I've, I've uh, definitely grown a vast distaste for Jim Lee art uh, over the last uh, 20 years or so. Mm-hmm. Uh, and a lot of that art is not great anyway. Uh, but at the time, it was... Uh, but, uh, you know, yeah, when I was 13. It was different. Sure, it was I mean, yeah, yeah, it was like it was unique. And, but, but now I'm 38, and it's not. Right. And, uh, and I don't want to see it blown up now. Uh, yeah, they're going to be like eight times as big as yeah. they originally intended to, to print. Right. I'm sure it's probably like the actual size he drew it at. Right. Probably yeah. here. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you know, like I, I have noticed that. But then also, you know, I, I do most of my ordering through, you know, discount comic services. And, uh, uh, you know, they, when you place your order, they show you all the variants that are coming out with any particular issue that you're buying. Mm-hmm. And, uh, like, like, in a separate column or whatever. And, I would say 90% of the most Marvel variants, variants are listed from like 6 to like $50. Wow, yeah. Just to buy one. Yeah. And that may be because, you know, I'm not going to order 90% more of them. Yeah, right. <laughs> Whatever. You know, yeah. You know, I'm just a single customer, but. Yeah, they do still have some where you have to order a certain amount. Like there was one, I can't even remember what it was in the new previews. It was one of the number ones. Maybe it was Astonishing X-Men where you, you could order... One copy per every one thousand you order of the regular version. Oh, is that like the Venom? Or maybe it was a maybe it was like the, the Edge of Venom. Or, yeah. Or whatever. yeah, it's like hey, who's gonna do that? Right. Is somebody sure somebody does. Yeah. yeah. Bell. Maybe Bell. He might. He yeah. might. Uh, 
No, uh, like I remember when the first Brian Bendis Iron Man series came out last year, whatever it was. Mm-hmm. Uh, two years ago, I forget. Like, yeah. I ordered the, the blank variant. I was like, you know, I'll draw an Iron Man on that. Uh, they, they actually, that got cancelled uh, from my comic shop because uh, apparently, I guess, how that works is that the total number of orders that they get for that particular issue have to equal whatever to get the, uh, the right. variant. And apparently that did not happen, so I did not get the variant. Oh, did you get any issue then? Did they replace it with a different yeah, one? So yeah. Funded me yeah. And the money. Yeah, that makes sense. I wondered how they did that online because if they allow you to order rare variants, that means they they have to like order the regular ones to get those. Right. So, so yeah. I'm guessing that's how that works. Mm-hmm. Is, you know, based on all of their customers ordering right. that issue or whatever, because I think that's pretty much how they work. They don't order any for they Back do have stock. a brick order store, but I don't know. I think they order just like bare minimum. Right. Here. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so I mean, yeah, every time I see a Marvel variant, it's always you know like a hundred dollars, right? right? I mean, you know, this, you know, Black and white version of that same book, right? or, yeah. yeah. But, yeah no thanks. Yeah, so, at least DC variants tend to be uh, you know same price. Yeah, yeah. and they're yeah, and they're typically different artwork too, right, which yeah. is cool. Yeah. Oh well. But, yeah. So we did a comic show. Yeah, we did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did decent. Um, it was the Jim and Dan's comic show at Wright State University. Yeah. Um, it's a quarterly show here in Dayton, Ohio, and it w- it wasn't the best or worst one of those we've ever done. It was just like a decent show. Yeah. It's worth doing, but we didn't come home with mad cash or anything. Yeah. Uh, I, I came around two thirty or so in the afternoon, about an hour and a half before uh, closing time. And that was very weird setup to me. Mm-hmm. Uh, usually, like, you know, they've got the desk set oh, up yeah. where you, you get your ticket and you walk into the showroom, and uh, they didn't have that. It was just like, uh, here's a hallway. Mm-hmm. And there's, like, just people sitting in the hallway. I was like, I don't know what this is. And then I looked and saw the normal showroom. Right. So I just walked in there and ignored everything that was happening anywhere else. I think, I think that was, like, their artist alley. Yeah. I think that's what they're doing now is like they're having the artists in that in that hallway and I'm like I don't that's, know if it's gonna not great. Yeah, I don't think I mean you have to walk by the artist to get to the the showroom. No you don't. Oh you don't? Like the tables where the artists were sitting were well past the first door to get into the showroom. Oh uh, okay. Because the door I went out was the well, door the door you go yeah. out, yeah. But, okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, when, when you first walked in, like, yeah, it was, it was the door to the showroom, mm. and there's tables. Okay. Like, well, I can avoid all those. Wow. Oh. Yeah. Huh. Yeah, I like it when they mix the artists in with the regular showroom, because, you know. Especially last time when I was uh, there as a... Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it makes me wonder if I'm going to... Because we were going to... Well, we already told them, I guess. Cause right. We, uh, well, we'll have to... We'll have to Consider that. Yeah, yeah. I was I was considering doing the next one. So I figured, you know, every other one would be cool. Yeah. Do, but, uh, yeah, that's the new setup. Uh, maybe not. Maybe as not. a customer, I did not enjoy that. Mm-hmm. And I can only imagine I wasn't the only customer that thought the same. Yeah, I mean, I walked, I went to, like, the restroom once and to the snack machine once, and both times I walked through that artist alley, and both times there was a dude just sitting there behind his table and, like, he just kind of stared at me as I walked by. It wasn't anybody I, I knew. Right. Um, and he, there was nobody at his table, and I just felt awkward. And, like, yeah. like he was, like, hoping that I would stop there. And right. I didn't either yeah. time. Yeah. Um, hmm. yeah, that's awkward. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. So, anyway, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, I showed up late. Uh, yeah, I mean, I had some... I was, I was there shopping. Yeah. yeah. Nothing, nothing life uh, threatening. Nothing, uh, nothing life saving. Yes. Yeah. I bought um, our friend Brian John Mitchell, friend of the show, gave me an idea um, that he said there was an artist in his town that was buying 
uh, coverless Golden Age comics and then recreating his own versions of the cover and attaching them to the books. Huh. And uh, so I found there was a guy right across from the table we were at, He, a friend of mine named John that was selling some books, and he had some coverless books, including uh, Fantastic Four number 50, um, Silver Surfer Galactus Story. Yeah. And so I bought that for five bucks without a cover. I mean, that, that book goes for hundreds of dollars with a cover. Um, so, I, with, you know, a nice copy does. Right, right. Um, so I, I bought that for five bucks, and I'm going to draw my, my own uh, Fantastic Four number 50 cover. Nice. Just staple it on there. Yeah. So... Seems like a lot of effort. It seems fun, yeah, but sure. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, but I'm gonna keep it in my collection because okay. I love, I love Jack Kirby Silver Surfer art. Oh, yeah, and, yeah. So awesome. So that was fun. That yeah. was, that was like, that was my big find at the show. Yeah. I don't think I had uh, my my one big find was was like a book that like I've not seen anywhere else for sale was. <laughs> Copy of uh, the Spectre, Volume Four, Number Nineteen. Oh, uh, that's that's the one. Is that on Wizards Number One Hot Book List yep. right now? <laughs> uh, I I did something uh, insensitive, um, subconsciously racist, perhaps at the show. Um, a friend of mine named James, who is an African American gentleman, sure. uh, I was talking to him, and he was like, he was like, hey, he's like. He's like, if you see any copies of Black Lightning number one, I'm really looking for one because they're gonna, there's, you know, there's gonna be a new show coming up, and he's like, I want to grab one before it shoots some price. And I was like, I just saw one, like, like seriously, James, like two minutes ago, in this guy's five dollar box over here. And he's like, really? And I was like, yeah. And I, like, I walked over to it. And I was like, it's this box right here. And I was like, hey, I gotta get back to my table, but it's right in there. I'll see you. And uh, and I left and went back to my table. And then like an hour later, I saw him walking around. I was like, oh, I'm gonna go see if he if he got that. And I went over to him and I was like, I was like, hey man, did you did you find that book? And he's like, he's like, well, there was a Black Goliath number one in there, but not a Black Lightning. And like, I started like, oh, you know, you know, uh, I, uh, you know, they're both, you know, I just, what do you, what do I say here? So should have said, oh, somebody must have picked it up on it. That's what I should have said. Yeah. That's what you should have said. That's right. I was like, hey, I was right behind the Black Goliath, number one. <laughs> you didn't see it there? <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, you know, I just confused those two books together. Yeah. You know. Eh. I mean, they're neither one, like, huge characters. Or exactly. Anything. It's not like it was, he was looking for a Black Panther, number Actually, one. Black Goliath is a huge character. Well, it can be, yeah. <laughs> uh, but... But yeah, I mean they're both like pretty forgettable old DC you know, seventies things. Like Goliath is Marvel. Um But yeah, so so there's that. I really like Black Lightning as a character. Well yeah, I'm sure he's, he's great. Although I have zero interest in the T V show. You know why? Why's that? No fro mask. No fro mask. Because yep. oh. Black Lightning's uh secret identity. Uh, he puts on, uh, he's got his famous white eye mask right. uh, that is attached to a giant afro. A fake, a fake afro, yeah. 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 Uh, they're not doing that. They're not doing that in the, in the show, oh. and quite frankly, fuck you. <laughs> no interest. <laughs> That's awesome. And they're just giving him a Robocop suit. What? Is it like armor? Yeah. Mm. But yeah, no, I, I, I didn't mean to be. <laughs> Subconsciously <laughs> racist. Yeah, you know. I just was confused. No, it's fine. You know. I, and, and honestly, uh, you know, like in the, the minimal amount of time that I was walking around, I'm pretty sure I did see a Black Lightning number one somewhere. Yeah. I, I thought I did, anyway. Maybe you saw that Black Lightning. It could be. <laughs> They're all the same. Yeah. There's comics. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it's terrible. I felt bad. I felt bad. But like he he didn't seem offended or anything. He, yeah, he yeah. talked to me some more. So yeah, there yeah, you go. That's fine. I mean, you're famously known to be kind of dumb sometimes. It's and true. You smoked a lot of weed mm -hmm. you know, at a certain point in time in your life. Right. Very forgetful. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah he yeah. can't blame me. Exactly. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> but otherwise, it was a, 
It was a good show. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I did not uh, show up here late until late because uh, I went to see a movie. Mm. I saw Guardians of the Galaxy a Volume 2. Yes, yes you that did. I had been waiting weeks to see with anyone <laughs> that would go see it with me. And no, no one. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> And I knew that uh, if I waited any longer, it was going to get ruined for me. Right. And uh, and I'm glad because actually today, you know, like just quiets around on Twitter, like there was something that just clearly fucking ruined the movie that I saw. And I was like, fuck, just like, if I had waited a couple more days, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. It's good. It's very okay. good. This is, I thought it was very good. It was, it was good. Mm. I liked it. I enjoyed my experience watching it. Right. It was not as good as the first one. You didn't think so? I did not think so. I, I thought there were, like, it, it's not even in my top five, maybe even top ten favorite Marvel movies. Wow. And I've enjoyed yeah. pretty much all the Marvel movies. Yeah. I think the one that I can say that I don't really enjoy is uh, The Hulk. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I think this one, just a little bit above it. Right? Yeah. I I think it might be my favorite Marvel movie. Right? Yeah. Right. I just thought it was just way too over the top cartoony. Mm-hmm. See, I love cartoony. I, I like cartoony too in comics. <laughs> I like it in everything. Yeah, I don't know. It's just like, I didn't need a 10 minute scene of uh, Yondu and uh, Rocket Raccoon making. Crazy faces. I love the, the that scene. Space. I love that scene. I didn't need uh, uh, Star Lord off screen asking everybody if they had tape during the middle of a gigantic uh, universe in peril battle. <laughs> uh, but tape's important. I didn't need to see you know hundreds of Ravagers bouncing up and down in the moonlit sky uh, <laughs> repeatedly. <laughs> I didn't need to see Baby Groot dancing while... Uh, oh, everybody. come on. That was great. Baby Groot got on my nerves. Really? Got on my very oh. last fucking nerve. Oh, I love the Baby Groot. Uh, but otherwise, like, yeah, I, I, I enjoyed it for what it was. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I mean, as always, my biggest issue when I go see any movie is the people who are around me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then uh, this time I had a, an old guy who despite the fact that there's a perfectly good empty seat uh, right next to him on the other side, sat right next to me. And uh, uh, every time something kind of funny happened or every time maybe I kind of made a muffled chuckle, he would look over at me with like a big smile on his face like, Eh? Eh? It's funny, right? (laughs) That's the kind of thing you do to a friend. Right, sure. Yeah. Maybe he wanted to be your friend. That's too bad, because he was an old man wearing black loafers and white knee-high socks. Was it me in the future? Hey, Maybe name. that's why I was looking over at you. <laughs> I was like, hey, it's Eric from the past. <laughs> well, you should have at least introduced yourself. I should have been like, this is my favorite Marvel movie, and I traveled back in time to see it once again on its original run. <laughs> I mean, it's it's my second favorite Marvel movie because in 2027 they did uh, uh, the Team America movie that was just fabulous. <laughs> they already did Team America. <laughs> well, not the Marvel, the ones, not the Marvel. Yeah. I want the one with the Masked Rider or whatever his name was, yeah. Black 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 Rider. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it was Snake Eyes on a motorcycle. Right, yeah, yeah. yeah, so that's why I loved it when I was a kid. I'm looking forward to the U.S. one. Oh, it's going to be awesome. Yeah, after David Lynch finishes Twin Peaks, he's going to begin. <laughs> so, yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, I mean, admittedly, I have a lot of emotional attachment to the first Guardian movie. Sure. And, mm-hmm. uh, so, so there was a lot of kind of baggage going into this with me. Oh, yeah. And sense. also, I think. There's a very distinct problem that I have with certain sequels lately. Like, I felt like the second John Wick movie did this, the second Raid movie, where it's like, they try to do too much, mm-hmm. like, with, with the sequel. 
And then also there's a lot of, hey, remember the thing that you liked from the first one? Eh? 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 I think I'll give you a little of stuff you like from the first one. This one was so blatant, though. Like, literally the first line of dialogue is, hey, a-holes. It's, I mean, that is like right, a yeah. direct callback to, you know, <coughs> famous scene from first movie. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah. It was fine. It was perfectly fine. I'll, I'll see the third one mm-hmm. whenever it comes out. Did you see it in 3D or I anything? Knew. Yeah. I I don't think I'm going to see it in 3D. I, I think I do want to see it a second time in a theater, but I, I I saw it standard, and I'm, I'll probably see it standard again. If it doesn't work standard, then it doesn't deserve to be a movie. Well, it works standard. Exactly. So, But I, I'm a, I might try it 3D to see what it's like in 3D as well. Yeah. Don't need no fucking 3D. I, I, I typically don't. Yeah, maybe I'll just see. Yeah. I don't know. I, uh, you're right. I, I don't usually like the 3D stuff. It's, it's not worth the extra money. No. Yeah. Except for Jackass 3D. That was great. That was my. That is seriously no joke. My favorite movie I've seen in 3D. Like Jackass 3. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a good time. Anything else uh, new and exciting? Mm-hmm. Yeah. The Peaks just started up. Yeah. None of us have watched it yet. No. I do want to see that. Yeah. Uh, new Alien movie just came out. Yeah. Have I have that? not seen that yet either. Yeah, I don't know when I'm going to get to either. I don't think it's going to be anytime soon. So I want to see it, but I'm not going to rush out to see it. I could see it at night. I have time at night, but I don't want to. I want to see it in the early day. I'm with you. Yeah. Nighttime movie going is uh, for the birds. <laughs> yeah. My experience this Sunday also says a daytime movie going is also possibly <laughs> for the birds. Hey, we we'll can just wait till they're on DVD. Yeah, yeah, I, that that is definitely a movie I could easily wait mm-hmm. to see on, on Blu-ray or whatever. Streaming. Mm-hmm. Oh, streaming. Yeah. Yeah. I I don't know. I think I'm more excited to see Alien than any other movie that's coming out this year. Spider-Man. Yeah. Spider-Man Homecoming? Yep. Yeah. But I could still probably wait till it's on DVD. Because it's only like three months from now. It's not like it's a year from now. So, yeah. We'll see. But, uh, yeah. yeah. I will say this about uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. Is that uh, despite my problems with it, I would rather watch it a million times over than sitting through Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice every year. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I've never seen that, and I can probably say that on my deathbed, too. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I envy you. Those are three hours of my life I will never oh, look back. That's a long... Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Even two hours, I wouldn't want to watch no, that movie. No, not at all. Hmm. Sorry. Eh. That's a lot of Night Court you could have been watching. It, it was, the, was indeed. That's uh, like nine episodes of Night Court you could have watched. <laughs> <laughs> That would have been a lot better, right? Uh-huh. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, it would have been. Oh, well. I brought it on myself. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Speaking of bringing things on myself, I should probably myself pick a comic for ourselves to read. Uh, I don't know, Wordsworth couldn't have said, said it more eloquently than that. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so uh, there's a little bit of a history behind this comic. Uh, it initially started coming out in 2011. Uh, three issues came out, and then nothing. It was Ooh. a four issue series. Oh, okay. And then flash forward six years later, a couple months ago, they started re releasing the series, and the fourth issue finally just came out like a couple weeks ago. Ooh, I think I should know what this is, but I can't remember what that is. It is called Loose Ends oh, okay. by Jason Latour, Chris Bruner, and uh, Rico Renzi. Okay. Uh, it is a southern gothic crime romance. Hmm. That sounds lovely. Yeah. Uh, but no, yeah, so, uh, yeah, like, fucking half a decade ago, 
uh, that book started coming out, and it was kind of magazine format inside. I do remember that, yeah. And uh, three issues came out, and nothing ever came out uh, after so, that. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, last fall, I uh, got a chance to meet uh, the entire creative team at uh, the Cincinnati something, something, something. <laughs> right. Uh, the Spike Con. Uh, the Tony Moore Spike Con. And uh, I had the first issue of, of that book. Uh, to get signed by by everybody there, and uh, they were apparently very shocked to see it. Uh, apparently, that is not something that came across their tables very really. Often. Yeah. Well, wow. wonder why. Uh, probably because uh, nobody gives a shit, and uh, it wasn't finished. It, it yeah. wasn't uh, Spider Gwen. Oh, that's right. Those are the guys that do Spider Gwen. Yeah. yeah. At least Jason Latour. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh. So, uh, so yeah, when I had it signed, uh, I was like, you know, so, hey, any word on the fourth issue? And he was like, there's news coming. There's news coming very soon. And, like, literally, I think two weeks later, they announced that it was being republished by wow. Image. Yeah, okay. Uh, unfortunately, they're comic-sized and not <laughs> magazine-sized, <laughs> so I had to buy all four issues oh, all over again. So they'd be... And, and the OCD right. in me, wow. what little OCD that I have, uh, it would be very disturbed. So let the final issue be smaller. Yeah. 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 Uh, so, so this is something where I can lend you the first three issues Sweet. Uh, of one format, and I'll read the, them at the same time. And then uh, when I finish the fourth issue, I'll let you uh, read that one. Ooh, so which version do I get to read? Ooh, probably uh, the comic size version. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Do I get to read all four of the comic size versions? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Cool. So I'll read three magazine sized versions and one comic size. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah. So yeah. <clears throat> that is my favorite. What's it called again? Loose and Loose and Okay. Yeah. Sounds good. Let's read it. Alrighty. Mm-hmm. Cool. Well, uh-huh. Goodbye. Good goodbye. For now. For for now. Yeah. Maybe. We'll see. You never know. Oh, yeah. Anything can happen. Exactly. We could not off on heroin in the middle That's of traffic. That's true. That's true. It happens. <laughs> Call back. Oh. <laughs> Goodbye. Thank you for listening to Gutter Trash. You can subscribe to the show from guttertrash.net or from iTunes and leave us a review. Visit guttertrash.net for email information and for other podcasts and websites in the Gutter Trash Network. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time.